Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on the third Sunday of Lent. We're continuing our series through this season, learning from Peter as he follows Jesus, and we will hear another story today about his faithfulness. Today is the day of our congregational meeting, and we are trying a new experiment with our meeting. We are going to include some of what we would normally have after worship for our meeting. We're going to include that in our worship service, and I will guide you through that as we go along. But what we hope is that we will emphasize more deeply that all of what we do is part of our calling to glorify love and serve God together. So you'll be hearing from the session as part of our worship service, and then we will have the, the motions of the meeting at the end of the service where you see it, where in the bulletin it says, work of the people. And don't worry, I will help you through it. Now let us quiet our hearts and minds and open ourselves to the movement of God's spirit within us and among us as we come to worship God. <coughs>
Good morning. Please rise in body or in spirit. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before God, our maker. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Whether we whisper our prayers or speak them with conviction, we can trust that our God is gracious and merciful and is listening to us with love. Please pray with me. Holy God, some days we are quick to declare your goodness. Like Peter, we see you in our midst and we are confident in our faith. Other days, we are distracted and uncertain. Forgive us for losing sight of you. Some days, we are quick to claim your blessings. We trust that we are called and that we can make a difference. Other days, our praise falls silent and doubt creeps in. Forgive us for losing sight of ourselves. We ask for your tender grace for the days when we feel far from you and far from ourselves. Draw us closer to you in this holy season. Amen. Let us continue to draw near, God, near to God in the silence. <laughs> Rest in this good news. You belong to God. You are loved. 
You are claimed. You are forgiven. You are set free to love your God and to love your neighbor. Let us rise and sing praises to God. As God's forgiven people, I invite you to share with each other a sign of peace. As we come together in prayer this morning, we continue to remember our member, Cindy Wilcox, who is living at Francis House. We hold her in our prayers and her family and all those who are ill or recovering this week. Let us pray together. Holy God, we thank you that you come to us with grace and that you claim us with love. We thank you, especially this morning, for the gift of your church, for people who will laugh out loud with us and cry with us, who challenge us and stand beside us when we need them the most. We thank you for the people who teach us what it looks like to be faithful, people who helped us practice grace and forgiveness, people who take us back when we lose our way. Oh God, we are grateful for the people that you give us that are your church. And we ask you to help us together to listen for your word today, to draw us on, to deepen our understanding and our trust. We ask that you would give us courage to act for the sake of love and to learn from our stumbles and our falls and to treasure the moments when we glimpse the fullness of your glory. Oh God, we ask you to hear us as we pray together this morning for our community here in Syracuse and in the surrounding neighborhoods. We ask especially for your grace for those who carry heavy burdens and who hold little power. Hear us as we pray together for our country. We especially ask for wisdom and discernment and a yearning for the common good in this election year. Oh God, hear us as we pray for your children across the world. We remember especially those who weep, those who have lost what cannot be measured, those who endure violence. Oh God, within our community, we remember Cindy and lift her up to you in prayer and ask that you would surround her with your peace and with your love. 
And we lift up to you those we hold in our hearts and name in the silence. We thank you that you hear our prayers and ask you in this season to help us continue to follow in the way of Jesus, who came to us in love and who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
sight, O oh Lord, in thy sight, O oh Lord, in thy sight. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Let us listen for the word of God. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Abba in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the realm of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We have been following along with Peter through these first weeks of Lent. We were watching as he was overwhelmed by an abundance of fish and responded to God's call. Last week we were feeling amazed as he stepped boldly out onto the water with Jesus and we learned from his wholehearted faith as he started to sink and reached out to Jesus for rescue. And our story today may be where Peter and, and perhaps we begin to learn more deeply that all of this following with Jesus is not only for his sake, but also for the sake of God's great work of love in the world. Today Jesus asks his disciples, who, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter confesses in this bright moment of clarity, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus responds to this powerful moment by blessing him and renaming him. Blessed are you, Simon. Son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Abba in heaven, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Peter's confession is the solid foundation, the rock, for all those faithful ones who come after him, who will become the church. My professor, Charlie Kauser, wrote, the declaration from Peter about who Jesus is has very special significance for who the church is. Because people of God, we are not just any kind of community here. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are those who have at least heard, who have at least glimpsed something about who Jesus is. We are the church. We are those who have blurted out in one way or another in our lives, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. We are the church. We are the ones who know that one rock alone does not stand against the powers of darkness. And Peter shows us the way in his moment of clarity. 
Now, when he confesses Jesus as the son of the living God, he does not suddenly become perfect. When Jesus names him as the rock of the church, Peter is still learning, and we know that he will blunder and fall and fail. But in this moment, in this moment, he shows us all that we must do to be built on the solid rock of confession. Confession of Jesus Christ as Messiah, the Son of the living God. When Stan Saunders was writing about that, he describes it saying that Peter confesses that Jesus is both the fulfillment of Israel's hope for a deliverer, and he is also the one who bears a unique and intimate relationship with God. He is God's very Son. He's the deliverer, and he is God's son. And that is a bold confession for Peter to make. And that continues to be a bold confession for each of us to make. When we confess that Jesus is the Messiah, we claim both who he is, and we begin to claim who we are called to be as his followers. When Simon Peter makes his confession, Jesus gives him a new name. And if you look back in the Old Testament, you see that when Abram and Jacob received new names, they were associated with being the birth of a new people. And it's the same way with Peter. When Simon's name is changed to Peter, it marks the foundation of a new people, the people who will be God's church, you and me. We are a community built on the confession of Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And the good news about this, there's lots of good news about this, but part of the good news about this is that this confession is pure gift. It is pure grace in our lives. Jesus tells Peter, blessed are you, Simon, because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Abba, my Father in heaven. What makes Peter and the church blessed is nothing that we bring to the table. Not Peter's bold nature or his attempts at being faithful. Not any of our understanding or our gifts that we offer. Although Peter's obedience contributes to his clarity in that moment, there's no way that any of us clearly confess our faith without the gracious revelation of our God. Our God initiates. Our God sent Jesus to us. Our God even now discloses to us who Jesus is through the holy text of Scripture and through the movement of the Holy Spirit among us. Confessing community of disciples, the church lives from the beginning testimony till the fulfillment of the kingdom by the sheer grace of God. And here's the great good news. The tremendous power of our living God is set loose whenever the church of Jesus Christ lives into the reality of grace and confession. Grace and power are given to the church so that we might work together and stand together for the sake of love. Grace and power are given to us so that we can work together for justice, mercy, and peace. Grace and power are given to us so that we can stand against violence and oppression and evil. Grace and power are given to us so we can stand together against all the powers of darkness in this world. And every time, the church must anticipate and prepare itself for intense opposition in the world. And every time, we must be wise and planning for the future, But Jesus promises and proves that not even death is stronger. Not even death is stronger than the group of disciples faithfully confessing and following him. Jesus promises that the gates of Hades will not prevail against us when we are set loose in this world by the power of God. Hear that again. Jesus promises 
that not even the gates of hell itself will prevail against us when we are set loose in the world by the very power and grace and love of God. Thanks be to God in this season for Simon Peter. May his faithful and graceful confession show us the way. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Amen. As we listen for God's word together today, our session, our governing board would like to share with you how they have been listening for God's call in this transitional time in our congregation. And as I invite Craig to come forward, Justin will be handing out a handout for everybody to follow along. We're going to hear from Craig Williams, our clerk of session, who will introduce the mission study process that the congregation will be engaging. And then we'll hear from Marissa Saunders, who is an elder and president of our trustees, and she will give us a brief overview of the budget that was approved by your session and how that budget reflects our mission. And following the benediction at the end of worship, there will be an opportunity for anyone who would like to talk with the session members about the mission study or the budget and to remain in the sanctuary for an informal time of conversation and questions. Thank you, Craig. Good morning. I come before you today to uh, provide um, a simple overview regarding what our congregation will be embarking on, and that is a mission study. Similar to the sermon that you just heard, it will allow this congregation the opportunity to address the question, who are we and what are we called to do? Who are we and what are we called to do a mission study is something that occurs within the life of this congregation of of a congregation when it allows it to clarify a number of issues. It allows it to align themselves with what are your spiritual yearnings, to clarify what our mission is and what is our purpose. Among the things that we will be doing in this process is to understand some of our congregational dynamics. We will go through an analysis of the congregation, examining what its demographics, strengths, weaknesses, and what are the spiritual needs. It allows us to promote self-awareness and opportunities for this congregation to reach out in a meaningful way to help and to grow and to improve. It also allows us the opportunity to connect with the community. It will foster a deeper understanding of how this church can more effectively serve and connect with our neighbors 
and align with our missional goals. As we go through this process, we will establish goals and objectives, and we hopefully will be articulate as we cast what our vision is and to tell the world, those near and far, who we are and whose we are. In the process, we will be building unity and a stronger commitment. It will allow for us an opportunity to strengthen our discipleship, for us to live out our roles individually and collectively, what we say in terms of what we believe. So in essence, a mission study for us is not just an administrative task, but it's really a spiritual journey. It'll serve as a catalyst for congregational renewal, community engagement, and hopefully reinvigorate our commitment to the transformative way of following Christ. You have been provided a document that I hope that you will take with you and when you are home, you have a you know, free moment just to read and to uh, ponder what role you can play in this process. After our meeting and service, I will make myself available to answer any questions that you might have. And you can expect more communications from the session in general, and more specifically myself with regard to this process. Thank you. Good morning, I'm back, did you miss me? <laughs> so my name is Marissa Saunders and I'm one of the elders um, on this session. And so I'm going, and I'm also um, the uh, trustee, the president of the trustees. So I'm going to just kind of give you a highlight of what our budget is looking like. Um, and currently our total income is $590,431. Just so that you know, the session will continue to discern and work together on our income um, and do that in various ways, which will also include um, thinking about how we as God's people give. Um, we also, for our total, total personnel, it's $386,290, and that includes two things. Um, we did um, approve uh, the COLA increase at 3.2% for staff, as well as with the mission study, um, we have moved Bridget Boyle from unpaid parish associate to paid, as she will be working to with the mission study um, as um, support in that area, as the minister to support us in that area. Um, for our total programming, it's $134,555. That also includes about 86,000 for our property, which is for our maintenance and upkeep of the building. Um, this allows us, for those who don't know, or just to remind you, our building is not just used for the sanctuary for our sermons and our worship. It is also used for our community partners. So making sure that our building is up to code and everything is at top, in top shape allows us to continue to do that work with our community partners as well. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be here if we didn't have that component in place because that's how I actually got started with Park Central was as a community partner. Um, for our mission, our total mission is 38,000. Um, and that includes our Africa mission, our community partnerships that we do, 
as well as our church world support work that we do. Um, so that's included in that. We have our total expenses at 564821, but that budget also reflects our mission as a church and it includes the additional of our loan principal payments of $25,610. Um, as uh, Sarah mentioned, I will be available after service. I also have copies of the line to line uh, budget if you want to have a copy of what the budget looks like line to line, but I will also make myself available. I believe um, Ben, who is our treasurer, would also be available and other session members are here that would also be available if you have any questions or want to have discussion about the budget. Amen? All right. <laughs> Thank you, Craig and Marissa. Today, as we reach our response to God's word and our invitation to engagement, each week we ask ourselves what we can offer, what of our life and our love and our labor we can offer for the ministry of God's work in this place. So I invite you, if you are here today, to leave your offerings in the offering plates. You can also give online. You can also go old school and mail in a check to the church. All of the ways of giving are wonderful and spread the love of God throughout our community. Today, as part of our engagement, we will have an opportunity for active members to vote on motions that move our life together forward. This is what would normally be our business meeting, and we are including it within our worship to remind ourselves more strongly that everything we do together is part of the way we glorify and love and serve our God together. If you are visiting this morning, you are so very welcome to stay and to be a part of that meeting. You may also, as we sing the hymn, you may also go on into fellowship hour and get the best cookies while you wait for us to finish. And if you are with us online, we are grateful for your presence with us. We will be ending the live stream at the end of the hymn so that it is clear that we are holding our meeting completely in person because that's one of the things we need to do by New York State law. So I invite you now uh, to stand for the final hymn and then we will move into the motions for the meeting. Oh. 